Hey guys, West Coast Taco here and welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be going over part two of the 30k service I did on my third gen Toyota Tacoma. For those of you guys that are looking at this part right now and wondering what you're looking at, stand by. This is very important and this could be happening inside of your Toyota Tacoma right now and you may not even know about it. You can get like regular um, regular ones that are the same brand. Mm -hmm. They don't have, because like with your truck, the, the factory ones, they have like a triple electrode, but it's a special type. It's like one long and two shorts. Oh, very So it's good. a very special plug. It's like these are very different. They have a ream on both sides. So most of them don't. So, so will I notice a performance change at all? Or just mainly it's just better for the engine as, as a whole? No, these are just going to work like exactly like factory. Okay. Like I say, the other ones people put in don't work as good. So when they change the plugs, you usually downgrade it. So cool. these are using the real ones because these, these plugs are like 30 bucks a piece. Nice. But they work. So yeah. <laughs> it's not like you want the right stuff in there sure. to work properly. I mean, what is a cheap, so, cheaper spark plug that's not these run for? I mean, because at the end of the year, if you're, if you're saving five or 10 bucks, it's really not that big of a it, difference. It's not when you consider labor and all this stuff in it. It's really not much. But like you can get, I can get cheaper plugs for probably that'll work for your vehicle. Probably cheap ones I can find that I'd put in anything would be like a, 15 to 18 bucks a piece or something so i mean we're talking dollars we're not so talking like it's light not, yeah. yeah it's not enough so it's for, definitely like, worth going going after the better ones yes always always cool that's why it's like weird because places will have like other types but i'm like yeah i don't want those i want the ones that are that are coming from factory that's why i have to go through my place yeah one stop because they get the right stuff they know what they're doing over there so that's kind of nice nice i've been dealing with them for 15 years now very good so this is the good stuff yeah it's just so weird how it's like different yeah different side you know like different deal but it's cool these are supposed to actually have way better combustion when when the motor's colder too because of the electrode setup so these just work good all the time they're just the best ones there are cool so guys let's see if that's any easier there might you be. go might not be oh yeah oh yeah please Now everything's like, like buried under something, and that side's definitely. Yeah, they don't, don't want you to get to them. Huh. That's why they charge you so much money for these. It's insane. Like I was saying, I think the dealer, when the last guy was doing it, and I actually just um, found out from the dealer, I'm like, how much do you guys charge for this? And it wasn't even, I think it was Escondido, and they're one of the cheaper dealers. Sure. And they got, with parts, it was like right about 900 bucks after oh my you gosh. paid for everything else. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> my fuck, dude. What the hell? That's crazy. That is nuts. It is very nuts. so hard to come out. Cam sensor. This was the second ignition coil that Jason pulled out where we noticed this. And our thoughts are that potentially the spark plug in there was loose from the factory and that there was some blow by happening from the spark plug not being tightened all the way. Because, you know, in, I'll put down in the description some articles I found on Tacoma World of people having similar issues with their newer Tacomas. Essentially, you know, these are supposed to be hand tightened. But, you know, that can mean a lot of things like, you know, are they just twisting it with the hand with a socket extension or are they actually like tightening it with a ratchet till it's considered to be hand tight? So, you know, this is not nearly as bad as some of the other ignition coils I've seen. And to my knowledge, it wasn't, you know, causing any issues, but 
thankfully guys, I did do the spark plug change at my 26,000 mile mark because you know, if this would have been going for a longer period of time or if something would have happened, you just never know. So for those of you guys that have newer Tacomas or you know, third gens for that matter and you haven't done your spark plugs yet, you know, I don't think it would be a bad idea to at least go to your passenger side and check your ignition coils just to make sure you're not having any blow by or any issues because some of the pictures I've seen on Tacoma World are really bad. Now this video is not intended to give you guys, you know, heartburn or cause you guys to become paranoid. I'm just giving you guys a heads up that I would have never thought that this would have been an issue and clearly this was going on behind the scenes and no one knew about it. At some point, I'm assuming that the oil and stuff probably kind of sealed the spark plug in some way as it hardened and the blow by did stop eventually. But who knows, you know, when this started, when it stopped and how much longer it was going to go for because uh, it's kind of like rubberized at this point. But um, yeah, guys, hopefully this is helping you guys out a little bit, giving you some insight you know, like I said, spark plugs aren't required at 30,000 miles. But man, if you're having an issue with it and you don't even know about it, you know, what's what's it going to look like in 30,000 miles more at the 60,000 mile mark? So always better to be safe than sorry. And like I said, I'm going to clean this one up, keep it as a spare in case, God forbid, one of the other ignition coils goes out. But this was the only one that had this issue. If you guys are looking for the part number for the ignition coil for the third gen Tacoma, there it is, 909-19A-2008. Now, one thing that was actually kind of funny about me ordering this part is that I called the dealership, a local dealership, and they said, hey, um, we can order that part for you, but it's not in stock. It'll get here by tomorrow. And I said, okay, no problem. How much is it going to cost? They said $150. I went on their website. Their website showed it for $125, but they were given a discount of like 20%. Came out to ninety nine ninety eight, and it was free shipping on $75 or more, and I had it shipped to them. So literally by going through the website instead of through the guy directly on the phone, I saved like 42 bucks. Not too shabby. So if you guys are looking for tips on how to order OEM Toyota parts, that's my first tip that I'd recommend. Call them, see how much it's going to cost, and maybe beforehand go on their website for that dealership and see what they're charging online, and then you can kind of go from there. Kind of weird how it worked out. I'm not going to say that the sales guy in the parts section was trying to like upcharge me, but uh, it was just kind of strange. And so, yeah, hopefully this helps you guys if you're in the process of trying to get OEM parts without having to pay a fortune. So I'm going to try and get this ignition coil out without uh, having to take apart everything. Um, essentially, it looks like this wire right here is connected to this metal plate. So I'm going to loosen up this metal plate from that bolt. It's holding it down and see if anything's holding it down from the back, which I don't think it is, and then we'll go from there. That screw is out, 10 millimeter bolt, pretty simple. I loosened it up enough, I think I can maybe, maybe get to this after I disconnect um, a couple more wires here. Now the ignition coil is now out, and uh, I'm gonna clean this one up, and I'll save it you know, as a spare. There's that uh, part number for you. If I can get you down there. I mean, obviously inside there it looks pretty clean. I'm not super concerned about that. And it was honestly pretty easy to get off. It was a total of three 10 millimeter bolts. So one, two, three. I need to take off my air filter. So not too shabby there. All right, so let's compare the two of them. The old versus the new. And honestly, guys, I think this old one was still working. Uh, just the way it looked made me a little nervous. So like I said, clean that one up and uh, put the new one in. So obviously what they all look like compared to this one, which we believe once again was caused by a spark plug not being tightened all the way. All right, so the ignition coil is in, as you can see. First thing I'm gonna do is put the 10 millimeter bolt right into that spot. And after that, I'm gonna put back my cam sensor, which is right in here, this guy. And in there, I want the other longer 10 millimeter bolt. And after that, I'm going to plug in 
this ignition coil and plug in the front ignition coil. Good to go. Last thing I need to do is install, let's see if I can get this thing to focus here. There we go. Install that shorter 10 millimeter bolt right in there. And we're good to go. This took me maybe all of 10 minutes. All right guys, I'll finish here. Once you're all done, I highly recommend just checking all your cables, making sure everything was put back in properly. Everything is snug, everything is tight. Just to be safe, I've seen articles on Tacoma World where somebody will do this work and forget to plug one of the ignition coils back in. So just double check everything, make sure everything's good and you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so you stay fairly busy for being yeah. independent out here. No advertisement yes. on the road or nothing. Not dropping, Zero. not dropping mailers in people's mailboxes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I do no advertisement really. I mean, I don't do anything. But I mean, if you do the work that you obviously do, word of mouth is gonna. Yeah, that's it. what kind of just that does everything for me is word of mouth and and referrals from, you know, like the customers that I already have. But I've been doing it for so long now that it's a pretty big list. <laughs> sure. Which is good. So yeah, it works out. It's just just been lucky that I, I've always taken care of people, so they always have usually nice things to say. So pretty That's, stoked. Very fortunate. Isn't it funny how how that works? <laughs> it is. It is. You, you take care of people and and you actually do the right thing, and somehow they refer you. It's amazing. Yeah. Sure. What are you putting on it? What what is that this stuff? Is copper. Like just copper. Copper anti seize. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's actually really expensive stuff. It's got like way more copper than most stuff does. Okay, cool. And, and what does that really do for spark plugs? Is it uh, like longevity? It keeps them from seizing in the head because they're different materials. Okay. If you're putting steel in an aluminum head, so this will help uh, it not have um, like electrolysis or it starts to like eat in the head. Okay. So yeah, just something you always want to do. And then plus, next guy to take these out, they'll come out easy instead of getting stuck in the cylinder. Cool. Which will happen if you put them in dry sometimes. Which you'll, be, you'll, you'll be the one taking them out and putting new ones in, so <laughs> making the job easier for you down the road. <laughs> I'm thinking about whoever, so if it's me, then I've done my job right. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Can't sit in the chair all day. You cannot do it. How's it looking? Uh, I mean, you can definitely see like the crap built up on the tip. Sure. It's hot as shit. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not a bad thing to do. I mean, they don't wear a whole ton, but you can see some buildup on the tip. So yep. it does see a little bit of wear. So about 26,000 miles. I mean, they're going on three years old. Right. So. Yeah, so it's... It's not bad. It's not like degrading a whole lot yet, but you can see a little bit of like arcing marks on it, which is normal, but like it's probably still working pretty good at yeah. the moment. But again, it's like it starts to break down. You kind of want to get it because it, it, the resistance actually changes inside too. And you can't really see that. Okay. So. Not a bad thing to do. Cool. And you can see where visibly. Shops, we call that day. Nobody had them. Yeah. We got champions. I'm like, no way. You got to keep them banging the electrode when you put them in because they're such so far in there. Sure. So don't drop them. Do not drop them. And you wonder why it runs like crap. It's missing on a cylinder. Why? You smashed it up there. Yeah. Look fine before you put it in. I started by hand too. Let's 
You ever ran into, I'm sure you have, ran into spark plugs that were cross-threaded? Yeah. How was that? Uh, it's not good. It ruins yeah. the head. So they just re-threaded the head. The problem is the heads are usually aluminum. Mm -hmm. Spark plug's metal, so which one's going to win? Oh, yeah. <laughs> not good. Not good. Bad day. Then you got to, like, try to helicoil, drill it out, helicoil it, not put all that metal in the engine. It's just not a good day. Oh, man. It's a huge problem. Just hand tight. Yeah, I kind of have to have a feel for it. I'm sure there's probably a torque spec for it, but I don't use torque wrenches. Well, the natural, not on this stuff. Yeah, the natural torque in your mind is telling you exactly based off the hand pressure. Yeah, I kind of know exactly what to feel for it after a millennia of working on vehicles. Yep. Out of the three generations of Tacomas that you've worked on, mm -hmm. and I guess the ones that were prior before they were called Tacomas, trucks. yeah. What's your least favorite engine to work on the third gen? Because of all the extra stuff um, you gotta hop through, or? Not really, I mean, these are, for spark plugs, these are the more difficult ones. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, probably these are the hardest. I mean, they're not that bad. Sure. Could be worse, but yeah, these are definitely gonna be the more more complex of all, all yeah. of the Tacomas, Toyotas. So the ones, earlier ones are super easy. Everything is right in front of your face. Yep. I'm curious to see how the new fourth gen is going to be laid out. Oh, man. They're going to be a nightmare. I'm assuming, you know, you obviously haven't probably seen too much on them yet, but are you planning to work on those when they do come out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, they're going to be, uh, but, I mean, they're going to be kind of a pain if once they run the, uh, the four-cylinder turbo with the hybrid system at the same time, having them both of them working at the same time. Yeah. The engine compartment's full. I've already seen the engine compartment. It's like, oh Jesus! Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of stuff in that engine compartment. Are you a little nervous about the turbo? I mean, they do tend to fail at first, like once until they get it all figured out. Unless they, I don't know, come out with no problems. But usually they'll have some some teething pains. You know, it's like. That's what usually happens. I know that the the Tundra was already having that issue. Yeah. Now, how about so? I mean. I'm not speaking from experience, but like you've probably heard of the Hilux four-cylinder diesel, right? Yep. So what's going to be the difference between like that and what they have here? Because I know one's gas, one's diesel. So the Hilux has a reputation of just being bulletproof. Yeah, and it's a, it's a different truck too. Um, it's close to a Tacoma, but it's not exactly the same. Okay. It's just different. I mean, it's kind of hard to put any comparison between a gas and a diesel. Yeah. Because they're so completely different. So pretty much anybody that's saying like, oh, look at the Hilux, that's kind of, you can't really compare them like apples and apples. Not necessarily. The, the, the chassis is a little bit different. Things are different. They're not the exact same truck. Like people think it just has a different like name tag on it. Yeah. And that's not the case. They're much more different than people realize that don't, don't get that. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a thing, but yeah, those new ones, man, it's just, it's like with the four cylinder twin turbos and then also the the hybrid system that's tying into it, it's like that's so complex yeah i don't know it's a lot of a lot of failure points i see well you have a lot of fun and i'm sure it'll keep you busy <laughs> I would definitely add a bed stiffener because they're just they're known these beds are known to crack sure because they're just composite um, yep so they're weak so i would definitely add bed stiffeners otherwise it's probably gonna have a problem by just flexing and flailing because that thing's trying to spread the bed when it's on it yep so those i would definitely do that the shock 5100s might work if you don't load it much if it's an empty shell because mm. it's, it's, it's a little stiffer than stock shock but what really helps to help the um the thing is adding spring more than just a shock Okay. So you want to spring it and shock it, and you actually add the weight back there. So probably want to add an add a leaf at the same time. Okay. 
to kind of counter the weight and then the shock's going to just damp you know dampen the the movement so okay i would kind of do both of those things otherwise you're kind of not really covering all your bases got some funky angles you got to work with on this yes, thing yes i only need my arms to bend in a couple more digits to be good i had an <laughs> extra elbow right be beneficial for this kind of stuff How those looking? Same. Same. Yeah, I mean the engine's happy. There's no like weird uh, oil or anything on them, so. Cool. Engine's doing all right. It's always good. I mean, it's a new Toyota, so it's probably never gonna have all the issues, but. Right. It's always good to know you can read the plugs to see if it's having some premature yeah stuff going on yeah like if you see like a has a bad valve seal or something inside the, i'll start getting oily okay having a bunch of black soot on it talk about giving them just a barely enough room to get in there yeah really i mean it's just just enough just enough weren't being generous that day Negative. nope i mean most of your clients actually adhere to your recommendation on like every 30k doing this stuff or do a lot of them just kind of say oh okay and then they <laughs> a lot of them kind of do actually cool okay if they really want to keep the truck for a long time yeah so yeah typically they always come back for stuff so yeah most of the time i think they do nice I mean, I would assume they would, but, you know, I'm sure there's people out there that are like, okay, thanks, man. And then it's like. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can move a horse to water, right? So that's all you like, can do. It just it is what it is. So, I mean, I'm like, I just tell them that's what I would do. Yeah. If I want my vehicle to last as long as possible. I mean, they're a pretty, pretty big investment. You want to sort of keep around for a while. Yeah. Because with the price of vehicles, they're just getting bonkers, man. They're going oh, my so gosh. Hard. It's insane. It's nuts. The part that kills me about them is I feel like they're becoming like less reliable too. So you're paying more yeah. for like a lesser product. <laughs> it's true though. I mean, it always comes down to the bottom dollar, right? Like the metal on the th on the things gets thinner. The paint gets parts cheaper. The paint gets thinner too. It's just like yeah, everything's just getting less and less because they're trying to maximize profits. You know, and it's like well. Uh, and they throw some like technology and some glitter on it, and yeah, they exactly. Look at that, huh? Mm -hmm. Most people don't do this. I just can't see it. Doesn't mean it's not there. Out of sight, out of mind. The bottom's where a lot of it's at. Is that all just from like airflow? Just dirt, yeah, some, some dirty air gets in there or it's what? from the PCB system. Positive crank kicks ventilation, which is basically just sucking all the oil vapor back into the motor. Okay. So it just recycles it, recirculates. Got it. So probably like a little mixture of like a little bit of dust and then that oil residue just kind of creates a nice little. Yeah, just oil vapor just gets sticks on it. Okay. There we go. Freaking brand new looking now. Sweet. Sometimes the idle gets a little weird after that because you clean it. And so it's and not used to gets it. It's a little bigger, so it has to recalibrate. Sure. Okay. In order to to be to fit in with the crew or whatever, so, you know, I'm just. 
It's like there's so many little shits there. All right, so we are all wrapped up here. Jason, thank you for this. Appreciate all the work. Guys, once again, hit Jason up. If you guys are someone in the local area, you have what people out in Arizona that even come out here sometimes and have you do yeah, work? Yeah, for bigger jobs, suspension, stuff like that. A lot of the welding jobs, relocations for the shops, those are big, so people come pretty far for those too. So cool. yeah, they drive pretty far. Sometimes. All right. I mean, if quality, honesty, and just the reputation means anything to you, I think the drive is well worth it, in my opinion. Peace of mind is better than taking it to just anywhere and not knowing what they're doing under your hood. Yeah, 60 pages on different world. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Till next time. Talk to you soon. See ya.